Like in previous editions, in this video I'll cover a few more popular industry cinema lenses which are used to shoot feature films and commercials. I'll break down the ergonomics of each lens, as well as their look, by using footage shot with this glass. Hopefully this will provide some insight into what kinds of jobs and stories each lens is practically and aesthetically suited for. Although Panavision probably remains one of the most popular choices when it comes to shooting in the anamorphic format, certain lesser known brands such as Kawa are still a fixture across the industry. These two times anamorphic lenses were made in Japan in the 60s and 70s. The Kawas are exceedingly compact and are therefore a popular choice for lightweight setups such as Movi, Steadicam or car mounts. Only four focal lengths were manufactured ranging from a 40mm up to a 100mm. This means that DPs who require a wide selection of focal lengths may find the set undesirable or be forced to supplement the set with additional glass if longer lens shots are needed. As is often the case with vintage glass, the ergonomics of each set are dependent on their condition and whether they've been rehoused or not. The older sets which I've worked with before have had delicate internal mechanics meaning that assistants need to take care of them and use a lower torque strength on wireless follow focus systems so that the extended focus gears don't turn too fast or hard. This shouldn't be the case with more rugged, newly rehoused sets. Above all, the Kawas are valued for their look. They have all the sought after characteristics of vintage anamorphics, especially when shot wide open, with lower contrast, pronounced flares and significant focus fall off around the edges. So much so that on wider focal length lenses, only the very center of the frame will be sharp. Cinematographer Matthew Libertique elected to shoot the stage shots on A Star Is Born on the Kawas, specifically for their beautiful, exaggerated flares. I would characterize them as having even more aberrations, more bokeh, more flares than a Panavision C series set. The personality of these pronounced vintage characteristics are what has made Kawas popular, sought after lenses. From one vintage set to another, the Super Boltars are classic Hollywood spherical cinema lenses. They were originally produced in the 50s and 60s to be compatible with 35mm Mitchell BNCR cameras. Their construction is fairly compact and standardized over the six focal lengths with a fixed T2.3 aperture. Most Super Voltars now have added focus and iris gears for easier use with follow focus systems as well as PL mounts. As always with vintage lenses, modern rehousings will make the Voltars easier to work with. They have a distinctly retro image which is low in contrast, warm, fairly sharp in the center with a gradual focus fall off. This look has been used to give footage a desaturated vintage feel such as on period films. When shot wide open, they have a soft, blooming, halation effect on the highlights, which is reminiscent of shooting with an effects filter, like a Promist. The aberrations disappear and they sharpen up when stopped down to around T5.6. However, as half the charm of their look is due to their optical imperfections, shooting them stopped down doesn't make much sense to me. Panavision spherical Primo lenses are a workhorse in the features industry for production shooting Super 35. Not to be confused with the Primo anamorphics, which use a blend of modified Primo glass to create large anamorphic lenses. The Primos were introduced in the 1980s and have been manufactured in different series to this day. There are vast 14 focal lengths to choose from in the range and even more if you include the other series. They are exceedingly well constructed, hardy lenses in a medium size with many distance markings, a 112 front diameter and a T1.9 stop. Their solid, uniform construction makes them quick and easy for camera assistants to work with. Like all Panavision lenses, they come with a PV mount instead of the standard PL mount. A PV mount features a locating pin on the lens which is lined up at the bottom of the mount. The friction locking ring is then turned to secure the lens in place, resulting in an extremely strong lens seating, which is important for heavier lenses. 
Alongside the regular set, Panavision also offers a set of close focus Primos from 14.5mm to 35mm, which are great for achieving close up shots in focus on wider focal lengths. The Primo look is a fixture of Hollywood films. The lenses are sharp, with high contrast and resolution, and negligible distortion and artifacts. However, they are far from being bland and produce what I see as a subtle radiance which translates beautifully to skin tones in particular. Their flares are rich, warm and circular. They are consistent in their look and intercut seamlessly with zooms across the Primo line. Their reliability, ergonomics and flattering consistent look has made them exceedingly popular spherical primes. Leica introduced the spherical Cinema Sumilac C's to accompany their photographic lenses in 2011. The fast T1.4 primes come in 12 different focal lengths from 16mm to 135mm. Leica's unique focusing scale design means that these lenses have many focus markings, especially in the critical close focus range, which allows them to be built in a very compact form factor for such fast lenses. Their build quality is top class. They come in a standard, small size across the line with the same 95mm front diameter. This makes them excellent for lightweight camera builds such as Steadicam or Gimbal. Their look is very modern, super high resolution, sharp, clean across the frame and an even illumination across the field. When paired with digital cameras, their high resolution of images makes them a popular choice for blockbuster films with lots of VFX work. This combination of a compact form factor with an excessively clean look appealed to DOP Jeff Cronenworth. We chose the Leica Sumilac C lenses for Gone Girl because, unlike other choices, the Sumilac C's have this amazing ability to maintain extreme resolution while still understanding and considering the complexity of the human face. The fact that they are able to maintain the same small profile throughout the range of focal lengths further removes the filmmaker from any complications created by invasive footprints. Finally, let's look at a slightly unusual lens set. Tribe 7 is a new boutique company founded by cinematographer Bradford Young and lens technologist Neil Fantham. The calling card of their Blackwing 7 line of large format lenses are that they have tunable optical qualities. This means that visual properties such as sharpness, focus roll-off and flares can be personalized across a set as per the request of the owner. Each lens set comes with a choice of three looks, ranging from the moderate S or straight look to the X or extreme look, which is increased distortion, flares and optical distress. True to their name, they come in seven unusual focal lengths, which all end in a seven, ranging from 27 to 137 mm lots of sevens. The Blackwing sevens come with a fixed T1.9 stop across the range in solid modern casing with a 114 front diameter. The lenses were manufactured using the old formulas from Zeiss lenses from the 1930s to the 60s, combined with contemporary manufacturing technology. These lenses are suitable for cinematographers using large format cameras who desire a degree of texture and optical imperfection in their images. However, their low production volume makes them hard to come by. At the moment, they've mainly been used on short form content, such as music videos, where optical experimentation is more accepted. So that brings us to the end of another Cinema Lens Breakdown video. If you found this informative or interesting, please give the video a thumbs up, and if you have any comments, let me know below. Until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.